We continue our look at the church in Acts chapter 2. In message 1, we looked at the statement, they devoted themselves. And from that we brought out the fact that God is looking for a committed people, a passionate people, and a focused people. And as we move on now, we see the first of four things that they were committed to, that they were passionate about, that they focused upon. And the first one is the apostles' teaching. The four of them, actually, as we will move on in the series to look at the other three, the four of these uh, points that we look at, they are the constituent elements which characterised the coming together of the early church. And the first one is the apostles' teaching. I think it's important to remind ourselves that it is the apostles' teaching. So what can we draw from that? First of all, to stand in front of the church on a regular basis, we need to have knowledge. Paul writing to Timothy, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved and one who correctly handles the word of truth. To stand before a church, we need to know what we're talking about. We don't have a, a partial knowledge of the subject, but we have a knowledge that is full, so therefore we're able to stand and bring the Word of God in balance. Secondly, we need to have a call. It's not just about having a go. It's not just about filling a rotor and taking our turn at the front of the church. In Ephesians 4.11, a well-known passage of scripture, it tells us that Jesus gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Certainly if we are engaging in that ministry on a regular basis, in fact any ministry that we take on, we need to know that God has called us. That it's not just us doing something because we fancy getting into the pulpit. Paul, when he writes to the Galatian church, in fact, it's something we find replicated in several of his letters. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. In other words, Paul wasn't doing what he did because he fancied doing it. He was doing what he did because of the call of God, because it was God's plan for his life to pursue that ministry. Bring the knowledge and the call together. And what are we talking about? We're talking about qualified people. It's not about having a go, just filling in and seeing how it all works out. Paul, again, writing to Timothy, and the things you have heard me say, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. So the apostles section bit of this verse what do we draw from it? It's about qualified people. But then we look at the teaching itself. On a Sunday morning, Sunday evening, whenever we gather together as churches and we hear the sermon, the word of God, many ways that we describe it. What is the purpose of that man or that woman perhaps standing in that pulpit and bringing the message to us? Well, first of all, it's about instruction. Again, in Timothy 1, Timothy 3, 14, all the verses have appeared already on the screen, so you can look those up. But instruction, although I am hoping to come to you soon, I am writing these instructions. The Word of God instructs us as we read the Bible. It brings us instruction, how we should live our lives. Secondly, direction. Paul, again, in 1 Timothy the elders who direct the affairs of the church. So as we read the word of God, it brings direction to us. We may perhaps be at a crossroads, unsure of which path to take, but as we take on board the word of God into our lives, it will bring direction. Challenge, that's something that many people don't like. We want to go to church to have a good time, a nice time, to have our ears tickled, not to be challenged. But Paul, again in 2 Timothy this time, he writes, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke and encourage. Now we should never use the pulpit 
as a, as a battering ram to have a go at people. But at the same time, we should never shy away from bringing the full truth of God's word. And the Bible tells us that God disciplines us because he loves us. And in many ways, that is part of preaching. Preaching is not just about saying nice things that people want to hear. Sometimes it's about bringing a challenge. Of course we have to be sensitive and of course we should never use the pulpit to have a go at people. Although invariably, if folks are immature, then they will automatically think that they're, they're uh, being the target of someone having a go at them. But that should not be the case anyway. We should use the pulpit to bring God's word in an objective way, which from time to time will bring a challenge. And fourthly, it's about encouragement. Acts chapter 20 and verse 2, it tells that Paul traveled through that area speaking many words of encouragement. When we bring A, B, C and D together, it equals growth. Instruction, direction, challenge and encouragement. Bring them together and we grow in our individual lives as Christians. We grow in our relationship with God through the word of God being taught to us so that we understand it much better. I think it's important to bring in conclusion a couple of scriptures, could bring many more of course, but just a couple of scriptures to highlight the importance of correct teaching. In Titus 1, for there are many rebellious people, mere talkers and deceivers, they are ruining whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach. Unfortunately, as it was in the day of the early church, it is true today that there are those who run churches, there are those that take the pulpit that have an ulterior motive. And I'm not talking about just a, a, a little personal battle with someone in the church at that time and they say things that they shouldn't say and they use the pulpit in a wrong way. Perhaps many of us have, have, have said things from the front or said things in our lives that we shouldn't have said. But I'm talking about those who have a deep-rooted, hidden agenda. Perhaps they run a church. Perhaps they started a church. Perhaps they're pastoring a church, but they don't have the call of God upon their lives. It wasn't something that God called them to do. But there's another agenda. There's another motive that's pushing those people on. And so consequently, what they teach will not fit in to the compartment of sound, balanced doctrine that is intended for the church to grow. It will be about them. They will have a hidden agenda and sometimes it won't quite be so hidden. 2 Timothy, back to that book again, well 1 and 2 Timothy, that Paul writes to that young man uh, starting out in the ministry. Paul was his mentor and so we can glean a lot of good, useful information from there. Paul writes, for the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. If we're under that sort of ministry that is not God ordained, that has not been called by God, that God does not have his hand upon it, then we're in danger of turning away from the truth of God's word.